what's your one well, one of your field experiences um, that you thought was like somebody uh, was trying to pressurize you or you had you probably were in a situation where you were in a lot of pressure and uh, you had to take some decisions you were not happy about then what was the decision you took any any incident like that yeah uh, just tell me I was one. doing yeah. uh, I, I was kind of new in, in RT and I was pretty good at shooting but uh, you know I didn't know much of the, the, uh, the uh, developing stage you know how to develop film and all this kind of stuff so uh, one of the level twos I was working with he was talking to one of the superintendents I believe and I assumed that they were talking about the job that the guy needed us to do. So he turned around and he said, hey, uh, can you put this six inch uh, weld inside the truck? So I you know, picked it up, put it in the truck, and the next day we go to do another job. So he says, hey, before we start this job, well, we're in their pipe yard. So he says, before we start this job, um, shoot this, call it one, two, three, four, five, and six. I was like, hmm, that, that doesn't sound right, but I mean, maybe he, he was talking to the guy, maybe they're just trying to do some tests or something, so <laughs> I shot it. I called one weld, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So he developed it, then we did the next job. Wow. And then the next day, he wound up going to another job, so I was working with another level two that they put on the job that we were doing this, these, uh, this, this six inch for. So we got to the job, <coughs> I gave the guy the film, and he started like, you know, kind of stroking his chin, saying, it's, you know, something's not right. And he was speaking Spanish. He called all his welders around. And I could just tell from the body language that something wasn't right. So I called the level two over. I said, hey, um, you know, the guy told me to shoot this weld and call it six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six different welds. Yeah. So same radiograph, like, same yeah. image for the six welds. Yep. Just to call all everything clean yeah. and save on time. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> he was like, "Oh man, that's a that's a federal offense." Mm -hmm. So corporate got involved. Uh, the guy went on fire. He got his search pulled. But that's when I had to make the decision. Uh, man, you know what's what the heck? Because I can go down for this. Oh yeah. You know, so I'm able <clears> to <throat> pull the plug on it. Thankfully. Yeah. Um, because the guy that he he didn't have much integrity anyway. Uh, so. You know, it was going to put me in a jam. So, wow. yeah, that's, that's one of the instances where I had to make a decision like that. Yeah, man, at least at least uh, your company was there to fire them. Fire yeah. them. Yeah. I and mean, was he technically strong? Was he technically strong? Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He, he, knew, he knew his stuff. It's just about, for him, it was taking shortcuts. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you come across that kind of stuff in the field all the time. Where they call it radaring and radiography. Right? Radaring? You, yeah, you keep on shooting the same weld over and over, and you're uh -huh. calling it different numbers. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, There's a, a term guys, for that, yeah, huh? called radaring. And a lot of guys got popped for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I wasn't going to be that, that, that person. I mean, it's because I, I went to school for it. So you yeah. And I stayed in my car for three and a half months. Yeah. Stuck in my car. It's not worth it, man. It's not worth it. I've I've seen people in UT, they would just walk up to the well, put some coupling, and walk off, just to show that they did some UT. They never even touched the transducer to the uh, to the to the pipe or whatever. And I was just watching. It's like, man, I gotta tell someone because yeah. it's dangerous. Exactly. It's not that I want that person to be fired. It's just dangerous. But yeah. Yeah, I was working. In, I mean, working in aerospace also where. You 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 hear that you know Southwest Airlines have some cracks in their oh, turbines yeah. and stuff yeah. like that, and yeah. then you're working in an aerospace company yourself, and then you you know some guys that might not be you know calibrated. Yeah. So, you know that that's a big deal. <coughs> you, you cal you're not calibrating, so you, you know you really don't know uh, what's going to fail, what right. a fail is. And that part could possibly have a crack in it that hits eighty percent or you know the rejectable limit. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't because you didn't cal, so you don't know if your amplitudes are right. Right. So you know you might be on that plane, or my, I might be on that plane, that has that crack in mm -hmm. that turbine that you didn't cal for. That yeah. Way. So you know, I, your family might be in that plane, exactly. or 
your family might be walking on the road and that plane is up, up there. It's exactly. about to fall down on your head. Anything can happen, man. Yeah, yeah it's just... Right. It's, it's, uh, it's more... I appreciate it more. Um, and it's just the way that I feel. I appreciate it more because I actually went to school for it. I took time to do it. Yeah. You know, some guys might take it for granted. Right. Uh, you know, that they... You know, it's just a nine to five to them. Their cousin hooked them up, or their brother hooked them up, or their mother or father hooked yeah, them up. So that's you know, how most of the people yeah, end up so in NDT anyway. They, they don't take the job seriously. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah, I think uh, that was some good advice, good story there. I hope uh, people realize it's not a easy job not to take it lightly and be uh, maintain your integrity when you do the inspections. Yeah. And I wish you the luck for your. Uh, UT level two, uh, phase ray level two journey. Thanks. From so now on, yeah, I'm excited to see you work in the field, man, and then hear more stories later on. For sure. For keep sure. keep in touch and uh, share what you learn in the field with everyone. For sure. And for anybody who's watching this, uh, Pratik Wag is a very he's a very good instructor. He, Thanks, man. He brings it down. He, he he brings he brings simplicity to to ultrasonics, so you can understand it with his analogies. His patience, you have to have a lot of patience to teach ultrasonics because it's, it could be complex at times. But, yeah. Um, yeah, he has all of the attributes of a good instructor. So Thanks, man. If you're looking to get into ultrasonics or NDT at all, Pratik Wag is, uh, is the guy to talk to. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate I said, it. I said your name and right. the, yeah, you said it perfect. You pronounced it right. <clears throat> the analogies part, I, I get it from my students, just like you. Like, mm -hmm. I learned a few new analogies just because uh, he had some good analogies to explain certain concepts and I just collect all of these from different students so that teaching becomes more fun and future students benefit yeah. from it. And so, if, you, yeah. if, if, you, if you have class with him, make sure you remind him if he forgets to do the Jeopardy. Right? It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeopardy is the highlight of, uh, of our yeah. training. Yeah. All right, man. All right, man. Thanks. Yeah. Have safe travels. You're flying out to Fargo. I'm driving out to You're Fargo. You're driving yeah. to Fargo, right? Yeah. <clears throat> My God, okay. 12 hour drive. All right, safe travels and we'll keep you guys posted. Peace out. All right, man. Peace.